a monstrous 16-foot great white is watching Hannah from below. So we were sitting out waiting for a set to come in and everything just went really quiet. I looked down at my leg and there was just this big grey black shadow in the water. Before I could really do anything or move or even have a chance to think what is that, it had hold of my leg from my knee down. The bite felt so gentle and like there was no pain. It was like nothing from what I would ever imagine a shark bite to feel like. Then comes that moment all survivors describe. She comes face to face with the shark. I can remember this massive head looking straight back at me. And its gums like pulled back with its teeth showing. Her cousin Sib rushes to Hannah's aid. He started punching it in the side of its head and he said it was just like a brick wall. But the shark does let go. And then Sib's like yelling at me, he's like, get on my board, get on my board. Just as she climbs onto Sib's back, the shark bites Hannah's board, which is still attached to her by the leash. It drags both her and the board under. It was just this big rush of water and I was being pulled backwards and you know, like our hands like let go of each other. The shark bites a chunk out of the board as the rest of it rockets back up to the surface with Hannah still attached. Again, she clambers onto Sib's back. Somehow, on this tiny little surfboard, the two of us, we managed to catch this wave. Sib tourniquets her leg while waiting for the paramedics. I could lose a lot of blood here. I could die on the beach. Hannah is rushed to the hospital where doctors use 200 stitches to close up her wounds. This one was the worst one, and this one, because I both went down to the bone. The bite heals, but she's left with permanent nerve damage. I can feel down from about my ankle down, and then it just goes numb all the way up to just above my knee. Since that day, Hannah has been fascinated by sharks, but she no longer feels comfortable in their domain.